Hi, my name's Claire Gallagher. I'm the author of Maths the Wacky Way, and I'm here today to show you how to do fractions the wacky way. Now, we're going to look at what you do when you add fractions, subtract fractions, multiply fractions, and divide fractions. These are likely to be on a non-calculator paper, so unfortunately, you can't use your calculator. You're going to have to know how to do these the proper way. Now, it doesn't matter which one we're going to be looking at, we're always going to end up multiplying in order to get our answer. So even if we're doing adding fractions, we'll be multiplying. If we're doing subtracting, we'll be multiplying. And hopefully, if you remember those rules, it will stop you from doing something else, which might seem to be the logical way to actually do the question, but won't actually be right. So let's start with adding fractions. Now, if we have two fractions together, um, what we're going to be doing, we're actually going to be doing a dance. We're going to be going boom, boom, pow. Now, my booms are diagonal. My pow is straight across. And what we're going to be doing, we're going to be timesing across this way, this way, and then the two bottom numbers together. So if you have a look with the A over B and C over D, what we actually end up with is A and D times together, B and C times together, and then B and D, whatever the numbers are, will also times together. So boom, boom, pow. Let's put some numbers into that. Let's take 3 sevenths plus 2 fifths. So as we can see, I've left some gaps where your answers will go. So we're going to be booming, and then we're going to be powing on the bottom. So the first boom will be 3 times 5. 3 times 5, 15. That will go in that top box as shown. We're then going to boom again this way. 7 times 2 is 14. That will then join the 15 on the top there. And then we're going to pow on the bottom. That's 7 times 5, which is 35. Now, when we filled those in, we see we've got 15 plus 14 on the top and we've got 35 on the bottom. Because we're adding them, we do add those right at the end there. So 15 plus 14 is 29. We can add those together. And then we leave the 35 as it is. So we end up with 29 over 35. So in order to get the answers, I've multiplied, boom, boom, pow. OK, and then at the end, we've just done that little simplification with the 15 plus the 14. Now, 29 over 35 will not simplify down anymore. We'll have a look at some where you can simplify them, but hopefully 29 isn't a familiar number to you. 29 doesn't appear in any of the times tables. So we know that that can't actually come down any further. That's adding. Now, the good news is when we subtract fractions, it's very, very similar. We're going to go boom, boom, pow again. The only difference is where we did that add at the end last time, we're going to do a subtract. OK, so we're still going to have the A times the D, whatever the numbers are, the B times the C, whatever the numbers are, and then down the bottom, the B times the D. Let's again put some numbers in. So if we have 6 over 11, take away 1 over 5, we're going to be going boom with the 6 times the 5, boom with the 11 times the 1, and then pow with the 11 times the 5. So 6 times 5 is 30. 11 times 1 is 11. Those are going to fill up those top two boxes. 11 times 5 is 55. That will go in the bottom. So we've got a 30, take away 11, divided by 55. Let's tidy up the top. 30 take away 11 is 19. 19 over 55. Now, again, it's possible that we could have simplified this. However, 19 doesn't go into any of our times tables. Again, it's not a familiar number. 55 does appear in our 11s and our 5 times tables. 5 and 11 do not go into 19. So this will stay as 19 divided by 55. So anybody says to you, how are you going to add or subtract fractions? Boom, boom, pow. Ready for the next ones. Let's have a look at multiplying fractions. Now, the good news is with multiplying fractions, you're going to do probably what you'd want to do. So your natural instincts might say, well, surely I just multiply. You do. What we're going to do here, we're going to go 
pow pow. So we are going to times the tops and we are going to times the bottoms. So if we use our A over B and our C over D, we're just literally going to times the A and the C, AC, whatever those numbers are, and the B and the D, BD, again, whatever those numbers are. Let's put some numbers into it. So if we have 3 divided by 8, or 3 eighths, times 4 over 9, 4 ninths, it's the same thing, we are literally going to go pow pow. We're going to times the tops. 3 times 4 is 12. We're going to times the bottoms. 8 times 9, we've seen this um, in the other lecture that you might have seen, um, where we do the 8 times tables. The 8th finger goes down. We've got 7 and we've got 2, 72. Okay, if you don't know what I'm talking about, have a look at my indice chapter because it talks through how we can do the nine times tables in a bit of an easier way. So we have 12 on the top and we have 72 on the bottom. Now 12 and 72 should be familiar to you. They come into quite a few times tables. We need to leave our fraction in the simplest form. So what we need to do is think what goes into 12, what goes into 72. Now you may notice straight away that 12 goes into both, so you could pull 12 out. However, an easier way of actually simplifying this down is to say, have I got an even number on the top? Have I got an even number on the bottom? If we have an even number on the top and the bottom, we can just divide by 2, both the top and the bottom. So where we'd have 12 over 72, let's divide it by 2, 6 over 36. Now they're both still even, 6 and 36 are both even numbers. Let's divide it by 2 again, 3, 18. Now 3 and 18 are not both even numbers because of course 3 is an odd number, however 3 does go into 18, it goes in 6 times. So what we can then do is divide the 3 and the 18 by 3 and we get 1 divided by 6. Okay, so that's how we would then simplify if the question said to put it in its simplest terms. So, adding, tick, subtracting, tick, multiplying, tick, we've got division left. Now, you may have noticed that add and subtract were very similar. Boom, boom, pow. Multiplication, pow, pow. Now, division is going to be very similar to multiplication. We can't actually divide fractions, so what we're going to do is we're going to change the division into a multiplication. Now, if you have a look, if we go back to our normal A over B, C over D, what I'm going to do is say, I want my divide to become a multiplication. Now, if I reverse the divide and it becomes the opposite of a multiplication, I need to also reverse the fraction that follows. So where I previously had C over D, I'm now going to have D over C. And what that does, it just turns it into a multiplication. So all we're going to do is actually end up pow powing. So with division, we need to do a flip and then we can pow pow. So the division sign will change. It changes to a multiply. Then we reverse the fractions and then we can pow pow. Let's put some numbers to it. So if we have 5 twelfths divided by 3 sevenths, divide, hmm, not too sure about that one. Let's change it to a multiplication. So if I straight away change the divide into a multiplication sign, I've got to flip, I've got to reverse my fraction that follows. So 3 over 7 is now 7 divided by 3. I've now got multiplication, so I can now Pow, pow. 5 times 7, 35. 12 times 3, 36. 35 over 36, that's how you'd leave your answer because we can't simplify it down anymore. 36, 35, they don't have any common factors. Now we've just run through adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing by doing our little dances, our boom, boom, pow, and our pow, pow, and our flip. Pow, pow. One thing I just want to mention before we finish this session is top heavy fractions. Now it might be that when you do your sum, you end up with a fraction that is top heavy. 
the top is bigger than the bottom. Now we don't like these because they basically wobble and fall over. So what we have to do is we have to simplify them and write them a bit better. Okay, so what we're going to do is say how many times does, let's take this example, 19 over 6, how many times does 6 go into 19? How many 6s actually fit into 19? Well, think of your 6 times tables, 6, 12, 18, right, that's got me 3 in there with 1 left over, remainder 1. Now, if it goes into it 3 full times, we're going to have a big 3, goes into it 3 full times. Where we've got a remainder 1 left over, that doesn't really tell us anything. So what we're going to do is, rather than saying remainder 1, we're going to say it's 1 divided by what we started with, what we were dividing. So our fraction was 6, we end up with big 3, and then 1 sixth. And you can do this with any fractions. If the top is heavier than the bottom, if the top is bigger, then we just need to change it into this more simplified version. Now I hope that helps. We've looked at all the different ways you could be tested on fractions. So now you just need to practice and get dancing with your boom boom pals and your pow pow.